Well, I guess I must be one of you, huh? It's interesting. Within a certain denomination, people are, have become so petty that what they see with their eyes makes the man. As the saying used to go, a thread of silk can make a nobleman. You triggered again, boy? Good. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please read along with me in the, uh, in the scriptures that we will be looking at. Read along with me, word for word, verse by verse of the scriptures we will be considering today. Read along with me, be a Berean. Okay? How many of you actually search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so? How many of you look for yourselves? Or because someone meets a certain criteria visually? That you're willing to accept anything without yourself looking. How many of you do that? I think the answer is obvious. Way too many. This video is not a, an affront to a certain individual, not at all. But rather, those that surround these types of individuals. This is what is being addressed. I've addressed this before. Praise the Lord. But it's being addressed again. Because the further we get to the redemption of the purchased possession, many are claiming to be of us, the saints. And their criteria is always a visual one. Because someone's making a similarity with someone who prefers the same kind of thing. And see, you're supposed to grow up and leave the high school adolescent-esque playground mentality behind. But especially in the construct of this social media thing, uh, that is far from the case. Is it, you don't like the color, right? Right? It's got to be a certain color. Mm -hmm. And you people have proven yourselves that the visual that you see is one of your criteria. You've proven it over and over and over and over again. Genesis chapter 3. Read along with me because you know what? My mouth will go quicker than my brain. And my brain will go quicker than my mouth. So read along with me. In the authorized version. The King James Version of the Scriptures. Which is the authorized version. The perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration. Word of God. Genesis chapter 3. Uh, two verses. Satan went to Eve. Where was Adam? We don't know. We can go off on that for hours, but we won't. Satan went to Eve. One of the things that Satan said on the eve, first thing he did was, Yea, hath God said. He questioned what God said. Then in verse 5, Satan said to Eve, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, eat the forbidden fruit. What it was is not important. The fact is that God said not to do to uh, eat of the fruit. Okay? In Revel uh, Genesis 17, he said, uh, excuse me, in Genesis 2, 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. He never said anything about touching it, okay? Don't eat it. That's, that's a command. That's a work, okay? But he said, for God doth, Satan said to Eve, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, do contrary to what the Lord said, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, 
knowing good and evil. Your eyes will be open. What you see. Verse 6. And when the woman saw... That the tree was good for food. Oh, looks good. <clears throat> and that the tree was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof, and did eat it, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened. And they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together. And made themselves aprons. Now, I purposely did that, obviously. Obviously. Because, hey, with uh, one of the criterias with a division within this denomination, um, that is part of the criteria. And that's why some of them go on the attack, because someone decides to wear a certain thing one day, and they go off saying, hey, see, he's trying to affix himself with us. Never once, boy. Y'all a bunch of petty people. Never grown up. And it shows. It shows. 1 Samuel chapter 16. 1 Samuel chapter 16. Just one verse. 1 Samuel chapter 16. One verse. Verse 7. Uh, actually, actually, let's read verses 6 and 7. This is when Samuel was led to Jesse. To, because the Lord had appointed him, you know, someone to be king in Saul's stead. Of course, that would be King David. Okay? Don't worry, I'm taking this off in, in a minute. I'm just trying to... I'm proving to you people a point. Okay? Because, number one, I don't like this kind of stuff. Number two, I'm getting a little warm. But! Samuel was sent unto Jesse to anoint a new king. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked upon Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. Looked upon him. He looked apart. They looked apart. Now, if a dude wants to wear this, that, whatever. Whatever. It's these people. It's the people that affix themselves to that and take on the visual and apply it to themselves to give off the thing that, hey, look, I look like that guy. I, I even have the same intonation of my voice, the same mannerisms. And they take that and copy and paste it. Okay? People, you need to watch out for this kind of stuff. Because... This people, these types of people that do these kind of things are very dangerous. Very dangerous. Verse 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature. Countenance is the body. Okay? Because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as a man seeth. Excuse me. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. And incidentally, any of you come across one of these so-called Christians, right, who say, well, God knows my heart. Oh, boy, here we go. Okay, here we go. Mark my words. Anybody who is claiming to be a saint, a saved individual, who will revert back to, well, God knows my heart, it is always, every single time, Every single time. A defensive reflex action to defend or justify something that they did that they know is not right. That they know is wrong. Okay? Every single time without exception. When you come across someone who's like, God knows my heart. He, he, he sure does. He, he sure does. Yes, he sure does. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jeremiah. 
Jeremiah 17, 9 and 10. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. And then you got some people who say, well, well, our hearts are different nowadays. Really? You're right. They've gotten worse. Gotten worse. Watch out for people who say, well, God knows my heart. They, yes, he sure does. Yes, he sure does. That's a cop-out excuse to justify sin, usually. Or something that they know that is contrary to the scriptures, and they're, oh, love is love. And there's whatever nonsense. Oh, you're, you're just fuming because I'm talking about this, ain't you? Because I'm wearing the identifying uh, thing that you affix. That you affix. Hmm? You petty, feeble-minded Christian. You petty, petty, adolescent, feeble-minded Christian. Uh, Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7, not John. Luke chapter 7, verses 24, on to verse 30. Mm -hmm. Not 8. And when the messengers of John were departed, he began to speak unto them, unto the people concerning John. John the Baptist was put into prison. He was going to get beheaded. And um, John had a moment of... <laughs> are you, you're, 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 real, you're really the Mashiach, right? Okay. He, he, had a, he had a weak moment, you could say. You know, it's like, you, are, you, you really are, okay? I, I, I saw, you know, um, you know, the spirit, you know, descending like a dove. I, you know, I've seen, you're the lamb. I... Give me a little bit more reassurance, okay? And then the Lord goes on and, and heals a lot of people and whatnot and shows like, hey, blessed is he who is not offended in me. But then Jesus has this to say about John. What went ye out into the wilderness for to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see? See, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. We walk by faith, not by sight. And the very thing that we are to be on guard against, some of these people within a certain denomination of Christianity has made it one of their main criteria. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Your arguments that you brought up scripturally have been answered. It's not my fault you don't want to address them. But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment. Hmm? That's the measure of a man, huh? Behold, <laughs> they which are gorgeously appareled and live delicately are in king's courts. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written. Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. And the uh, uh, spirit of Elijah will be in the description box for you. As will be um, When Challenge Die, a video that was done years and years and years, a couple years ago, uh, addressing this very thing. This has been something that has been going on that I've been noticing for quite a while, and it's getting worse. It's getting far worse. Okay? 
This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. For I say unto you, Among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he that is least in the kingdom of God, spiritual, is greater than he. Remember, our, our, our God, our, our Father, is the God of the little guy. Okay, he's the God of the little guy. Okay? And when you got people who want to create something to make it a big denomination now, and all the people that heard him, and the publicans justified God, being baptized with the baptism of John. Contrast. But the Pharisees, and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves being not baptized of him. You know, the, the hierarchy of the religious systems. Your denominational leaders. Okay? Talk about shock to the system. Hmm. And, uh, let's see, it was also go to Luke... 20 now. Luke 20. Luke 20. We want verses 45 on to verse 47. This is really getting warm. <laughs> I'm going to be taking this off here in a moment. Luke 20 verses 45 on to verse 47. Then in the audience of all the people he said unto his disciples Beware of the scribes which desire to walk in long robes and love greetings in the markets and the highest seats in the synagogues and the chief rooms at feasts which devour widows' houses and for a shoe, for a shoe, S-H-E-W to, you know, performance, and for a shoe make long prayers, the same shall receive greater damnation. They look the part. They sound the part. They imitate. They mimic. And the whole thing that is being uh, suggested onto you. you. You like one certain guy? Look at me. I also am affixed with him because I take on the outer accoutrements. And do virtually the same thing. And also virtually have the same kind of mannerisms and the same intonation of their voice. Same backgrounds, too, usually. But I, I'm the crazy one, huh? I'm the crazy one. Hmm. John 7. John 7. Verse, uh, just one verse. John 7, verse 24. Judge not according to the, peer, the appearance but judge righteous judgment. You people out there who want to belong to something and you're judging by whether or not, you know, and this is what set off some stupid little arrogant, hot, snot-nosed punk was that the fact that I wore one of these one day. And that's what set him off. And also, too, he wanted to justify um, his uh, yoking himself up with Rome one day in a month. Petty, immature, adolescent, childish. And their accu accusations about the, you know, you know, the flesh of Jesus Christ has been answered. It's not my fault that you don't want to go through it yourself. But it's see, it's a sign of the times, dear friends. Spiritual laziness, having your ears tickled and itched, being told smooth things, being told things to. Ra 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 your flesh. 
Proverbs 6. Proverbs 6. I feel better now that I've got that off. Proverbs 6. All right. Uh, we're going to have some light expository on this, not anything too ginormous. I know that's not a word, but bear with me. We are going to be in Proverbs 6. We're going to read verses 12 on to verse 19 and have some stops along the way. Okay, this is not going to be a verse by verse. We're going to be concentrating primarily on three verses. So please follow along. Okay, Proverbs 6, beginning at verse 12. A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a froward mouth. Verse 13. He winketh with his eyes. He speaketh with his feet. Where are they leading you? Where are you? I, I, again, I'm not talking about the individual, the one that everyone is idolizing, whether it be a certain guy there, a certain guy there, certain guy there. I'm talking about the cultish mentality that some, not all, not all, that some who seem to be the power players within these little groups, I'm addressing them. Okay? I'm addressing them. Because, see, like what was addressed in the cookie cutter uh, video, uh, a lot of these people are like that. Okay? A lot of people... Um, I like that. And thinking of a certain thing, uh, I can remember six individuals. Okay, Two are still going. The, the third is doing some stupid little news thing, which he so calls a little arrogant snot-nosed guy. But uh, the majority of them have gone away. Why? Because, number one, they weren't saved. And number two, they're not their own person with the Lord. They're trying to take something from someone else, affix, them, affix that to themselves, and give off the appearance, and even probably deceive themselves that they are something that they are not. It's, it's disgusting. It really is. But, again, verse 13. He winketh with his eyes, he speaketh with his feet. He teaches, teacheth with his fingers. Eyes, feet, and fingers. Eyes, feet, and fingers. Mark. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. Uh, verse 43 on to verse 48. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. For it is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. All things pertaining unto flesh. Okay? Having eyes to see, okay, is a twofold thing. Having eyes to see fleshly, you know, with, with these things in your head but also having eyes to see spiritually, okay? What, what would you say to a blind individual then who is a saint? They don't have physical eyes to see, but they can see clearly. Because why? They have the Lord within them. And they can read Braille scripture. Hmm. Hmm. See, the sight of the eyes is two. You got the physical and you have the spiritual, okay? And these people concentrate on the physical. <laughs> Look in the comment sections. I rest my case. Okay? Verse 14. Frowardness in, is in his heart. 
He deviseth mischief continually. He soweth discord. Soweth discord. Acts chapter 20. Just one verse. Acts chapter 20. One verse. We want verse 30. Acts chapter 20. Verse 30. If my fingers will get there. <laughs> Acts chapter 20, verse 30, one verse. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. See, with a lot of these people that surround themselves around a figurehead, they want to take from that figurehead to draw it onto themselves so that they become the popular I, I, I've seen this. So have you. So have you. Okay? With, uh, there are six specific individuals, which I don't really want to name. Uh, but there are six that I'm thinking of who followed a specific individual. Every single one of them. Every single one of them. Of course, that little not nose punk is one of them, of course. Uh, all took something from a certain individual and transferred it to themselves to give off this thing. Okay? Now, and as a, and as a brother had said to me uh, in a comment, and even said to me personally, you know, if you have a similarity with another person's spirit, soul, and body, and you have, you know, similar, th that's, that's totally different. It's something else when you are trying to take in order to put on for the visual stimuli. Like a lot of them do. And see, you guys deflect this because this is the fact. You're all about eye candy. You're all about eye candy, and you wanna you get you get brown stuff on your nose. Mr. D I you poor you poor man you. That comment you made of yourself, oh, I'm just a trash man taking out the trash. For I felt so, I, my heart ached for that when I read that comment. And I, and I pity you for that. I wouldn't mind talking to you. You're probably not going to see this and I don't care. But I wouldn't mind talking to you again. But anyway. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Might be their own, huh? Second uh, John. Second John. Second John. Remember, second and third John do not have a chapter. It's not one whatever. Okay. Second John, verses seven on to verse eleven. For many deceivers <laughs> are entered into the world. Okay. Pick I'm writing stuff down. For links in the description box. Who confess not that <clears throat> Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Hmm. Now, a while ago, there were those, and I taught this myself. I was in error, and I was corrected and rebuked and corrected it. That there are those out there, and thankfully this has gone away. And hey, this is, if this is going to be stirred up again, just check the description box because it's hooey. Okay? This whole thing about people proving that they're saved by saying, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, is no. Devils can say that. Devils. I used to say contrary to that, but I was rebuked. Okay? And corrected through Scripture. All right? And I publicly repented of it and corrected, uh, changed what I taught about that. Okay? The context of that is for those who do the preaching and teaching. We'll get to that later. Okay? We'll address that later. And there will be, in the description box, a video for you. If you have any question about that, watch that video. If you don't want to watch that video and go on ignorantly, willfully ignorant, which is stupidity, that's your problem, not mine. 
Okay? That's your problem, not mine. All right? Look to yourselves hmm. that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ he hath both the Father and the Son. And now, see, some will come along and say, well, see, what Christ taught in the Sermon on the Mount is not... No, 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 no. Got to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. What is this a reference unto? Go to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. We want... Uh, verse 3. All right? If any man teach otherwise, and consent not the wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. See, the Lord Jesus Christ, dear friend, gave us an example of charity, which is self-sacrifice. Okay? All right? With the washing of the disciples' feet is a great example of this. That example is what Christ gave us, even for today in this dispensation. That's what Paul is referring on to. That is what John is referring on to. Okay? The Sermon on the Mount, okay? I'm going to write that down. There's going to be links for you. Sermon on the Mount, okay? Doctrinally is not for us today. It's for the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Yes, there were things that crossed dispensational lines, obviously. But you got to remember, Jesus Christ was sent unto the Hebraic Jews, to the house of Israel. It is after the death, burial, and resurrection, and the blood shed on the cross, the death of the testator that brought in this dispensation, i.e., the New Testament. Okay? So, the doctrine of Christ, that he is God the Father, what Paul talked about, Okay, the doctrine according to godliness. That sacrificial, charitable example that the Lord gave. Okay, God the Father. God the Father came down and washed the stinking, rank, nasty feet of the disciples, of the apostles. Okay, he did that. That example of charity, which is self-sacrifice, you little twerp. Okay, is self-sacrifice. That charitable um, example, okay, that, that is what is being addressed. Not that the Sermon on the Mount is doctrinally salvific for us today. It isn't, because the Sermon on the Mount, and I'm saying the Sermon on the Mount because that's where they all point to who like to say, well, see, about who like to protest against rightly dividing the word of truth. It's like, so see, Sermon on the Mount is doctrinally, no, it isn't. Faith is mentioned one time in the form of a rebuke. He hadn't died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures yet. Okay? Just remember that. When you see this, it's talking about that example that Christ gave us of his sacrificial, self-sacrifice, charitable uh, attitude, whatever, that he gave, that he had. That's the example. That's what's being talked about. Okay? Let's read verse 9 again. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. Yeah, if, uh, if Jesus Christ is not God the Father, then you have the wrong God. And a lot of people st still believe in three people, <laughs> persons, excuse me, that make one God. Oh, boy. Anyway. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, Doctrine of what? That Jesus Christ is God the Father. Hmm? That Jesus Christ gave us an ensample of sacrificial, charitable love unto those who are of us. And also of love unto our enemies by telling them the truth. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house. Neither bid him God speed. For he that biddeth him God speed is partaker of his evil deeds. Company you keep. 
company you keep okay all right and now let's go to third john 9 on to verse 11 but see as it says in acts chapter 20 verse 30 in acts chapter 20 verse 30 again also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Look, you little twerp. Um, I've never, never gone about trying to steal subscribers. That, that, that's the mentality of these people. That's the mentality of these people. Okay? Anyway. 3 John 9. On to verse 11. I wrote unto the church. But Diotrephes. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't send these prophets. But they ran. It says that in Jeremiah 22 or 23 I think. How the false prophet wants to run and be at the forefront. I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds which he doeth, prating against us with malicious words, and not content therewith. Neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbiddeth them that would. And cast this them out of the church. Love it. Follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. And there's only one good, and that's God. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil hath not seen God. And that doesn't mean the actual world. I've seen Jesus. No, you haven't. Christ represented in his body. The saints. That's what that's talking about. Okay? Give me a break. This cultic adolescent schoolyard mentality that certain of these people with the, in one camp, another camp, and another camp, and another camp. Okay? This cultic mentality of a select few. Okay? Of a select few. All right. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds which he doeth, prating against us with malicious words, and not content therewith, neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbiddeth them that would, and casteth them out of the church. Beloved, follow not that which is evil. Grow up. You have your own path to walk with the Lord. Not according to your own way, according to the scriptures. We're, we'll end up with that again. Again. Okay? But it's between you and the Lord. He's giving you the scriptures. This is how he wants you to walk, according to his scriptures that he has given you. Okay? All right? And to have fellowship with brethren is beautiful, yes. Yes, but this cultic mentality, which seems to be of an object of control for these people, this is what you've got to watch out for. And there are select, high-ranking officials within these groups of people that do this. And those are the ones you've got to watch out for. Okay? You've you got to be careful. You've really got to be careful. Um... Now, 1 John, 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 6. Deep um, expository will be in the description box. We're just going to read this here. Verses 1 on to verse 6. Beloved, believe not every spirit, Lord K says, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets. That's the key to this. See, you used to be believed, and even I, hey, I messed up in this myself, okay, and I repented of it long ago, but 
It's about false prophets, the ones who are prophesying, the ones who are teaching, the leaders, as it were, okay? That's what the whole focus is on in this context, okay? It's not uh, Joe over there or uh, Martha over there or whatever. No, it's talking about what? False prophets who claim to speak for the Lord Jesus Christ, and they don't, okay? All right? That is what this is talking about. Because I've encountered several, and so have you, some of you, who say, <clears throat> Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. Uh, that can say that readily, mechanically. But they're not saved. Okay? They're not saved. I, I see, here's another thing. Here's a little wabbit for you. Um, one of the things that our enemies don't like is when you can remember things. See, the enemy wants you to be holding back by your past mess-ups. But when you remember things that expose them, they don't like that. I can remember, now whether or not it were two separate live streams or one, I can't remember that. But I, I clearly remember, as plain as day, when a Mr. D.I. had a live stream and they had a um, sunken-eyed individual um, come on there, and that sunken-eyed individual from Canada said, Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh. He did. He did. The man's not saved. And he, you know, and his response is like, hey, I met your criteria. And see, it was wrong to be have that assumption because the context of this is about those who are the prophets, the teachers, and the individual, the sunken eyed. He he doesn't. He's not. A, he's not. He's more like a commentator. Okay, he's more like a commentator. He's not guiding people through the scriptures. He's not deceiving people in that way. He's deceiving people. Oh boy, he's deceiving people. But not, uh, he's not coming off claiming to be a teacher or an expositor or anything like that. No, his, his deception is in a different shoe. Okay? Okay? All right? But the ones that are in, like, the prominent positions, you know, that these types of people like to flock around. Okay? That's what this is about. Okay? I also remember um, uh, another, I, whether or not it was in the same... Um, live stream or not but I remember this part where a couple of individuals with a certain guy from Australia <laughs> who called on the name of the Lord a thousand times okay who is a dark implant himself who has a mental disability but hides behind that disability and uses it to deceive because people will see someone I, and dark implants Oh boy, I got attacked pretty good for that one. <laughs> the dark implant video, okay. Oh boy, a lot of people got on me on that one. Because, for example, the guy I'm talking about from Australia, okay. Number one, he's not ignorant. Number two, he knows the difference. Number three, he's hiding behind his disability to deceive people. Okay, he's a dark implant. But I remember a live stream with Mr. D.I., um, who, who I actually still care about, uh, where him and a couple of individuals coached, coached that guy from Australia into saying Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. They coached him. They coached him into it. Proof again. Proof again. That just because someone can say Jesus Christ is come in the flesh doesn't mean they're saved. The context is for those who are doing the pre the, the leaders. Okay, like I said, we will get the, the in depth on that will be in the description box. You don't want to watch that. You don't want to consider it. That's your problem, not mine, man. Let's continue. Hereby know ye the capitalist spirit of God. Every lowercase says, in parted, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. What's the context? 
prophets. Verse 3. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. What's the context? Prophets. Okay? And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the coil. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen, amen, hallelujah. There is no hallelujah in Scripture. Find it within the text of Scripture. It's hallelujah, not hallelujah, okay? Ye are of God, little children. And have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world. But they speak about godly things. Yes, they do. Catapulted from a worldly perspective. Because what is their criteria? Visual stimuli. And also audible because... You know, when you're, you're talking a very type of soothing uh, tonation and demeanor and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And also with a background. Mm -hmm. Which others are, hey, one guy does that, whatever, whatever. That, that, that's petty to get on that. But see, these people, these cultic people will take that and make it their own to try to infiltrate and deceive you. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And of course, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, just one verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, just one verse. That's all that we need for this. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. But the natural man, unregenerate, receiveth not the things of the capital S Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. And then you go to Romans 8. Romans 8, verses 1 on to verse 8. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law, and that's capital S, by the way, and the law of the capital S Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of Of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. See, here's the thing. The flesh of Jesus Christ was sinful. Okay? We, we, we've proved that and debunked all the... Because uh, like, no, it wasn't. Y yes, it was. Okay? The flesh of Jesus Christ was sinful. Okay? Judge not video will be in the description box for you. Any questions, check that out. But see thing that these guys do, they call flesh God, but Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifests in the flesh. What these guys do is say flesh is God. God was in flesh. Flesh itself was never God. God was in it. Flesh, absolutely. But God is not flesh. Okay? Okay? So, Jesus Christ, who is God the Father, did what no man can do. He kept the law perfectly hence never sinned at all hence that sinful flesh was sanctified because Christ did what no man could do he kept the law perfectly henceforth that sinful flesh that Jesus Christ is come into was sanctified okay that's what that that's the whole thing about that okay okay watch out for these people that's a telltale sign, too. When they get all worked up about something like that, it's like, oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. What's God to you, huh? This? <laughs> Take a line at the great white throne, boy! <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, let's continue in Romans 8, verse 4. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, because their God is their belly. But they that are after the capital S Spirit, the things of the capital S Spirit. For to be carnally minded, fleshly minded, to, because the carnal mind, uh, for the carnal act, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind, fleshly, carnal, you looked that up yourself, is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. And like I keep telling you, I'm not going after an individual at all. What I am addressing are those that surround themselves around certain individuals. It's not just the one that you already kind of figured out. No, it's more than that. Okay, it's with all kinds of people within Christianity that, that circle their wagons and try to affix themselves to a certain individual and take individual stimuli upon themselves. It's not, it's not just relegated to these guys. It's not. Okay? Nor 51 minutes in, nor is it, I believe, the intention of the individual. It sure isn't doing anything about it. That I will say. That I will say. Okay? That I will say. Now, let's go back. Let's go back to Proverbs 6. Picking up at verse 15. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. Suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. And as I said, I can think of six individuals. Two are still going and a third is doing whatever. The other three have disappeared, gone off into obscurity. See, when you have this kind of cultic mentality, okay, that's what happens. That's what happens. Why? Because you're not walking with the Lord yourself. You're trying to mimic and imitate somebody else. And some of them are still some of them are still going strong today. Because that's what you people want. That's what you people want. Why? Anyway, let's continue. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud love. Oh, with uh, some uh, uh, and some of the camps of these uh, King James Bible believing Christians, uh, the proud, the pride that comes out from them, okay, the pride that comes out, uh, especially with the uh, real, uh, real Bible believers. Uh, what's his name, Kim? Uh, those, those guys, those guys that that you know, you look at that comment section. So, oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And also with others, okay, of this same denomination. Okay? Of this same denomination. Proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, make false accusations against people who are actually saved. And then they get the rah, rah, rah thing going on as if they're watching a football game. Oh, Notre Dame in football. Gee, imagine that. Huh? Yeah. And heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift to run into mischief. A lot of you people... And, then, and again... Not all, not hardly all of them. It's a little leaven, leaveneth the whole lump, people. The There are a select few in all these camps that is leavening the whole lump with this cultic, high school-esque, adolescent mentality. Okay? These are the ones that you need to avoid. These are the ones that need to shut up! Okay. 
a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Um, and there is a way you can check. I don't go to other people's channels and leave comments. If I do, it's rare. It's rare. I, I hardly even comment on uh, Brother Alexander's uh, videos. Okay? <laughs> All right? I hardly do. Uh, he knows I watch them. We watch them out there. Okay? We, he knows that. But I hardly comment on things. And um, my brethren, our friends, my friends, our brethren, um, aren't like that. Why is that? Why is that? Now, a, a brother might go to a channel and see something like, oh, wow, dude. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's right. There's this video. And, that, and that's it. That's it. Okay? Not trying to get people to come. God forbid. God forbid to come to something that I'm. But see, with these people, that's the thing. Come to me, or hey, hey, see, I'm, I'm following this guy. Come to him. It's a warped version of, where are you sending them? It's a warped, um, kind of veiled version of sending them to church. Now, there's nothing wrong, like if uh, you're witnessing to someone, it's like, hey, I got, uh, I've done this with uh, Brother Alexander's uh, videos before. It's like, hey, uh, I got a brother who makes videos on YouTube here. Check out his stuff because this is what it was talked about. It wasn't anything like go to this guy and follow him because of it. No. What is he saying? What is he saying to the scriptures? Cult of personality. Okay, that's what it is. It's a cult of personality. Okay? God forbid. God forbid. Anything ever. And it's not. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Don't want to deal with that. But never can this ever be a cult of personality as it is with Mr. Breaker. As it is with Mr. Kim, as it is with Mr. David Daniels, as it is with Stephen Anderson, and yes, as it is with the individual, the gentleman from Maine. Okay? Now, are all of these guys intentionally doing that to start a cult of personality? All of them? No. No. Um, <laughs> Gene Kim, uh, Robert Breaker, and Stephen Anderson? Absolutely. Absolutely. Them, them three guys definitely are out to have a cult of personality. The others, I don't think so. I, I don't believe so. Just kind of happened, I guess. Then why aren't you addressing it? Hmm? Why aren't you addressing it? To both y'all. All right? 2 Corinthians 10. 2 Corinthians 10. 2 Corinthians 10. Verses 8 on to verse 18. To the close. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord hath given us for edification, and not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed. And see, a lot of these guys from all over the walks of all the denominations of Christianity, especially on the, the construct here of social media, they, they enjoy making hit pieces or attack. Well, you know, we got to warn people. You know, and I agree with that. I agree with that. But there are those out there calling themselves Christians and also King James Bible believing Christians. That's all they do. That's all they do is expose this and expose that. And then they call it a great ministry. Yeah that I may not seem as if I would terrify you by letters. For his letters say they are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak, and his speech contemptible. Let such and one think this, that such as we are in, the wor in word by letters when we are absent, such will we be also indeed when we are present. I've said this to you before, and I'm saying it again. 
If you were to meet me personally, this is who you would meet. This is me, okay? I don't for one second believe that the names that I have mentioned, that if you were to meet them personally, I doubt that the, the one that you see on camera is the one you would, per, would meet personally. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I'll never find out, but I don't. I don't believe it. Okay? This is who, what you see is what you get. Okay? What you see is what you get. All right? As I speak, so am I. Okay? As I walk, so am I. All right? What you see is what you get. And, and that, that dude, Charles Lawson, too? Okay? That Charles Lawson guy? <laughs> okay? Uh, the, the one thing about Steven Anderson, the one credit you I will give that man, is what you see with Steven Anderson is what you get, besides the fact that he is a sodomite. Uh, he's a closeted sodomite. Okay? But one thing Steven Anderson does have, uh, this, he's the Steven Anderson that you see ranting and raving and going nuts, uh, I believe that same man is who you would meet in person. I'll give him that. I'll give him that. Okay, I believe the one, the Steven Anderson that you see on your screen there is the one you would meet in real life. Okay, I believe that for sure. But the others, I don't, I don't buy for one second. I don't. See, there's a transparency that needs to be there, especially in a position like this. Okay. You don't do you don't oh do your dirty laundry in public. No, scripture is against that. But you know there is a level of transparency that needs to be there. Okay, and you know how are we to know? How are we to know if these people that you are seeing are the same that they you see on the camera as if you were to meet them at the Walmart? Verse 12, for we dare not make ourselves of the number. You know, the whole King James Bible-believing Christianity thing, it is now a denomination. It is. I understood the concept. Okay, here, here okay, here, the mentality. Here's, here's Christianity, here's us who believe in King James Bible, right? But... Now what has happened is where they wanted it out here, it's just over time grafted itself, with every pun intended, grafted itself within the bounds of Christianity and is no longer anything separate except by these weirdo cultic people. But in that alone, it has made itself part of the number. Look, if you're saved and you read the authorized version of the scripture, you're a saint. What's wrong with that? Why do you want to fix yourself to something that is just another denomination? But well, you think these people are your friends? Disagree with the one that they're exalting on a uh, pedestal. Even our enemies would bring that up. And you know what? Right. And that gives me no joy to say that. Because I don't want it, but you know, where credit is due, you got to give it. For we dare not make ourselves of the number, or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they measuring themselves by themselves, and comparing themselves among themselves, are not wise. Look at them. Look at them all. Sit back and look at what this thing has become. Why do you want to be part of that? I, I, I truly do not understand. 
I don't. I, I truly don't. I truly do not understand why. I do. Because you want to belong to something, right? You want to feel like you're part of something, right? If you're saved, dude, don't you know that you're accepted in the beloved? Lord, we'll address that. Let's keep reading. But we will not boast of things without our measure. Now, the boasting without our measure is what? Which the Lord, verse 8, which the Lord hath given us for edification and not for your destruction. These types of people, when they do this, kind of, they'll come to this. Well, we're boasting, you know. We're boasting because we're this. It's for destruction because you don't meet their visual criteria. But we will not boast of things without our measure. But according to the measure of the rule which God hath distributed to us, a measure to reach even unto you. And what's the measure? And that, that and see, this is where you gotta watch out for these guys, these checklist dudes. Okay? That's when you gotta watch out for that. These, okay, if they do this, 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 they're saved. No. No. And see, someone will come to this, it's like, okay. Here's a checklist for you, <laughs> okay? And if they meet all that, then they're saved. Well, that's just another version of Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. That's all that is. And devils can say that. And devils can match the certain criteria to an extent. But see, it takes time. Not that much time. Yes, it does. It took a long time to decipher you. <laughs> Okay. You do have a checklist. It's here. But you got to remember, some people can put on a good facade for a long time. But sooner or later, like I've been telling you here, they shoot themselves in the foot. Okay? Usually. Most often than not. Okay? Let's continue. Let's continue. One, one moment, please. Sorry about that. Verse 14. For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure. Building on another man's foundation. Being something that we're not. Trying to fit someone's criteria to fit in. To something that in reality you should be suspect of. Okay? A click. And yes, we are, you could say we are a sect. Yes, we are. But these types of people have taken it to a whole unhealthy, devilish level. And use it for what? For destruction, not for edification. For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reach not unto you. For we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ, not boasting of things without our measure, that is, of other men's labors, but having hope when your faith is increased, that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly. To preach the gospel in the regions beyond you, and not to boast in another man's line of things made ready to our hand. Ait. Breaker Ait. Kim Ait. Daniels Ait. Anderson Ait, Ruckman Ait, Denlinger Ait. And there are those that actually are Ait's. I know of six of them. Okay? Every now that doesn't mean that if you're you know you go to one of those people, why would you go to Stephen Anderson? But whatever. Okay, <laughs> whatever, that's your problem. Okay, but um, that doesn't mean that, like, if you go to, to watch uh, David Daniels or, or whatever, uh, that doesn't mean that you're an ite. It's, you can, tell, you can tell them by their fruits. Look at the comment sections. Okay? But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. For he, for not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commendeth. Him. 
And see, when you switch that criteria to something that is a flesh, then you run into what we're running into today, dear friends. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 7. Do we begin again to commend ourselves, or need we, as some others, epistles of commendation to you, or letters of commendation from you? Well, you think I need your approval? Ye are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. Yeah, yeah. What kind of, what kind of fruit is it producing? Okay, look at the later, Ruck, look at the Ruckmanites. Okay, especially the modern ones that swing their jet, you know, that take their things and swing them around like that and, and throw hymnals and go crazy, kind of like the Pentecostals. Yeah. Yeah. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit, capital S, of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. And such trust have we through Christ the God word. Oh. Huh. I, I'm reading 2 Corinthians, not 1 Corinthians. But this works. Okay? And such trust have we through Christ the God word. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. Note that lowercase s. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth light. And it's not talking now, it's not about not reading the Scriptures. It's talking about the Old Testament law. Now, I told you 1 Corinthians chapter 3, but we, I accidentally read 2 Corinthians chapter 3. <laughs> and we'll stop at... Thank you! <laughs> that worked, didn't it? Go now to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. You were reading along, it's like, Brad, sure did fit, didn't it? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 and verse 7. I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, fleshly, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. Hebrews! Hold your place. Hebrews, where is that? Five. Hebrews five. And and this is the problem. How many of you are actually searching the scriptures? How many of you are actually reading along? How many of you were reading along and then you figured, Brad, that's not first Corinthians chapter three? How would you have known? How would you have known had you not been following along? How many of you do that? How many of you do that? Huh? Hebrews 5, 12 on verse 14. For when, for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For every one that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And when you get wrapped up into this cultic mentality with some of these people, you don't grow up into Christ. You remain on a level of adolescence. It's, it's disturbing. Okay? Back to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. For ye are, verse 3, For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not are ye not carnal and walk as men? People ask, well, why aren't you Christians all why don't you get along? First of all, I'm not a Christian. But second of all, to answer your question, as I already said, what gets in the way every single time? This. This. You see, if you're saved, we have the same father. The Lord Jesus Christ. If you're saved, a saint, you ought to be reading the scriptures. Okay? Sooner or later, the Lord will get you to the scriptures. That's how that works. Okay? The scriptures. 
are the deciding factor. Not our feelings, not our hearts, God forbid, not what so-and-so said or so-and-so said, not what uh, the vision of King James Bible-believing Christianity said or whatever. No, it's what say the scriptures. Are you being admonished to search the scriptures? Hmm? For while one saith, I am of Paul. And th <laughs> this is going on right now. For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos. Are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul? Who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Okay? Alright? Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. You know, I understand. You want to belong to something. You, you want to be part of something, you know. Uh, I don't care where you live. Uh, <laughs> how many of those around in your locality are saints and adhere to the authorized version of the scriptures. And aren't this, this marshmallow fluff Christianity, don't judge me, God loves you, nonsense. So what? You, you resort to online things. Okay. But do they transcend the online thing? Okay. There are those, our brethren, who I have personal communication with. Okay. I talk to them <laughs> when I have the time. Okay? All right? It's transcended from a thing such as this. Yes, we came in contact through this construct of social media. Yes. But it has gone beyond that and has cultivated and grown into true fellowship of the saints. Okay? And you got to remember, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 and verse 6. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be, to you, grace be to you, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him from him before the foundation of the world, and this is not Calvinism, okay, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Like the prodigal son, which has nothing to do with us today doctrinally, okay? Don't you know that you're always with me and all things that I have are yours? You want to belong to something. You belong to Christ. Fellowship with brethren, other brethren of a like mind. Amen. Hallelujah. But at the end of the day, Wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Accepted in the beloved. You do belong to something. You do belong to someone if you're a saint. If that's not enough for you to begin with, then all this so-called fellowship that you yearn for and are willing to subject yourself for because someone says something nice about you, it'll never be enough. Because our sufficiency is of who? It ought to be of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I understand, I get the loneliness thing. I do, I do. Don't get started on that. But I do, I get it. But, you know, you have to remember that if you if you can't grasp that you're accepted in the beloved if that is not good enough for you to start with 
then all this stuff that you are reaching for will never suffice. Okay? Psalm 133. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. So long as you follow the same guy I do. And that's the thing that these people do. The names I've mentioned I have no use for, especially Stephen Anderson. Okay, especially that guy's a devil. But the, the names I've mentioned to you I have no use for. Okay, none. Okay, Robert Breaker, whatever, I don't believe he's one of us anyway. Gene Kemp, that guy crazy. The other guys, I have no use for. Okay, it just did you go away. Go away. I want nothing to do with you. Okay? But then when you come across someone who is a, a linked with one of these people, it's like, well, I, I don't really care for the guy. Then it's like, well, you don't believe like the same guy I do. Are uh, you saved? Are you sure? Okay, you read the scripture? Okay? That's, that's, let's start with that. Let's start with that. Because I've encountered this so many times. The minute you shut down, it's like, look, look, dude, I don't, I, I have nothing to do with that demographic of people. Okay, I don't, I don't want anything to do with them. Never have, never will. It's like, you, you stay over there. I'm, I'm going to be right here reading the scriptures, okay? You go away. How many people I've had converse with or tried to who will, well, shut me off or go away because I don't listen to the same dude or want nothing to do with the same dude as you do? It's a little carnal, don't you think? But see, that happens. That's an unfortunate reality of things. You know, there, there's a dear brother in um, England, uh, and not the one from the coasts either. Um, but there's a dear brother who he and I just cannot get along. Uh, we can't. We, 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 we always find something to be kind of bickering about, and it just doesn't work. And, you know, I, I've reached out to him recently, and it's like, you know, I love you. Just watch out with some of the people you're consorting with, please. Okay. But, again, what got in the way? Flesh. Flesh. When we're in heaven, this isn't going to make a difference. Okay. Down here, unfortunately, it does. With a, uh, For the DI individual, what happened? Well, number one, he was deceived by some crazy nut job in Canada. Uh, evil man, uh, but again, what got in the way? Flesh. Flesh. Gets in the way every single time. And unfortunately, as you read in Acts chapter 15, that is something that happens. That's it's just how it is. And see, that's also a good argument against Calvinism. Because Calvinism and Calvinists take choice out of the equation. You're going to hell whether you want to go to hell or not. You're going to heaven whether you want to or not. They, they, you're a robot according to Calvinism. But okay, if we're all Calvinists according to them, all elect them, why don't we all get along? Flesh. Behold, Psalm uh, 133. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, and went down to the skirt of his garments. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Okay? Uh, Romans 15. Romans 15. Verses 1 on to verse 7. Romans 15, 1 on verse 7. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. And when you look at a lot of these rah, rah, rah guys in these little cult factions within these uh, divisions, within the denomination of King James Bible believing Christianity, you see a lot of pleasing of themselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. 
but a lot of these select people like to do it for destruction, okay? For even Christ pleased not himself, there's that sacrificial charitable thing of the example which we already addressed, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. How many of you are reading the scriptures daily? Huh? You know, if some of you would spend half the time in the scriptures as opposed to the time you give giving excuses why you don't, Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus, that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore receive ye one another as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Being like-minded. Now, theoretically... We got the same Father. We, we read the same scriptures. We're being led of the Lord to walk as He would have us to walk individually for Him. Why aren't we like-minded? I am a Paul. I am of Apollos. Carnal. Fleshly. Like I said, they're, they're, that's, that's not going to go away. It isn't. Until we get redeemed, and, and then this will not interfere anymore. And see, it's this that these cultic individuals and our enemies latch on to. And they use it to perpetuate and whatever it is for their own benefit, because their God is their belly. 2 Corinthians 13. 2 Corinthians 13. Verse 7 on to verse 13. Now I pray to God that ye do no, e do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. For we can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak, and ye are strong, and this also we wish, even your perfection. How many of these people, these uh, ringleaders, okay, and not the individuals themselves, it, there's a hierarchy. It's the pyramid thing. They got the guy at the top and that trickles down and then the base is wider than the top and everything flows up to the top over flooding the top, okay. It's the pyramid thing. Okay, well, this is not about me. This is about the Lord. Okay? This is about strengthening and encouraging you. Okay? Rebuking, correcting, chase, with some chastening, sure. But we are glad when we are weak and we are strong. Spend and to be spent for someone else. That charitable thing. That self-sacrifice. That example that the Lord gave us. Okay? Therefore I write these things being... Oops. Therefore I write these things being absent. Lest being present I should use sharpness. According to the power which the Lord hath given me to edification. And not to destruction. Again. Again. Where's the edification? So you might be like, Brad, look at you. Yes, yeah. That's part of this calling. But you have to remember also, which I do. Encouraging, strengthening. Which a lot of these cult followers don't. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Not sinlessly. Perfect here. Heart with the Lord. Be of good comfort, be of one mind. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. Greet one another with an holy kiss. <laughs> All the Christians salute you. All the saints 
salute you. All the saints. Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. Verses 27 on to verse 28. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. And when you look at King James Bible believing Christianity, as with all Christianity people, so I constantly am telling you, look at the fragmentation. Look at it. Even in the denomination of King James Bible believing Christianity. Okay? The fragmentation. How are we striving together for one mind? How are we striving together, excuse me, with one mind? How are we doing that? When they, when people attack things of character rather than scriptural matters. Little carnal, aren't you? And in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is an evident, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. See, those who are not are all about flesh. And if you haven't figured it out that all divisions, all denominations of Christianity are carnal. All of them are. All of them are. You really think the Lord is looking down at what man has done to what he has given? What's the dividing line? Number one, the scriptures. Number one, the scriptures. But when you uh, adhere to the same principles, the same doctrines as others who claim to be as you are, flesh gets in the way. They don't like the way you look. They didn't, they didn't like how you looked in the plaid shirt. They didn't like your extreme examples to smack someone to attention. Who cares? But, see, flesh is their criteria for these people. And, um, uh, dear, dear people, Philippians 2, 1 and 3, on to 3. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship in the capital S spirit, if any bowels of mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded. Having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. In the strife and vain glory. Like I said, I was attacked before because I wore a shirt. Okay? I, you know, people have, got, you know, attacked me personally because I held a loaded gun to my head. So what? Got your attention, didn't it? <laughs> sure did. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, and see, we're supposed to be like-minded as saints. But when strife and varying glory come in, which is the fuel for these, in these little cult factions within the denomination of King James Bible-believing Christianity, whoever it is, their figurehead is that they're affixing themselves to. Strife and vainglory. 
You guys don't care about other people. You don't. You just want to make a name for yourself. First Peter chapter three. First Peter chapter three. Verses eight and nine. First Peter chapter three, verses eight and nine. Finally, is this First Peter? Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. Finally, be ye all of one mind. How can you be of one mind when this is the deciding factor? But unfortunately, like I said, it happens. Unfortunately, I, well, no, I don't mean unfortunately, but there are people out there that I don't want to have fellowship with at all. Okay, a lot of these King James Bible-believing Christians who get warped, deluded into this, again, this high school adolescent mentality thing. Want nothing to do with that. Nothing. I mean, you know, grow up a little. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. Not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. I can't be one of one mind with someone who is a fanatical guy who wants to be, have, that has this cultic mentality. It's impossible. It's impossible because their main criteria is flesh and the visual, not what is the actual. Okay. I also got to remember that when it comes to this single-mindedness, this one-mindedness in Revelation chapter 17, which is talking about Roman Catholicism, okay, you, you read in verse 13 in Revelation 17, these have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. See, our enemies, these guys who have this mentality, they also have one mind. And who are they giving their glory unto, I wonder? I wonder. I wonder. Okay? I wonder. Uh, Proverbs chapter 1, verses 10 on to verse 19. Proverbs chapter 1. Verses 10 on to verse 19. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. To be part of a clique, to be part of a group, when you're already accepted in the beloved. Are you going to be a Methodist or a Lutheran or a Presbyterian or a Baptist or a King James Bible believing Christian? You're already accepted in the beloved. Are ye carnal? If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Yeah, everyone else cheering you on, huh? Yeah. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son? Walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain their, thy foot from their path, for their feet run to evil. And make haste to shed blood. There's that mention about the feet again. Isn't that interesting? Surely in vain is the net spread in the sight of any bird, and they lay wait for their own blood. They'll, these guys turn on each other in a drop of a hat. With no mercy. With no mercy. And they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain. Which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Greedy for gain. Saying that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. 
No, see, immediately you think of the financial, which encompasses what, what other gain? Don't you feel real strong when you got about 20 guys behind you, right? Huh? Don't you feel real good and puffed up when you got a bunch of, Amen, Amen, brother! Hmm? Don't you? Doesn't it make you feel good? Huh? That you're one of the boys, huh? You're one of the boys. I'm one of the beloved. I'm not one of the boys. <laughs> that's the thing. That's their game. They get their rah rah rahs, you right? They get, oh, amen, amen, brother, right? Yeah, fleshly carnal. Adolescent pigs. Okay? You got your game. Verily, you have your reward. You have your reward. Yeah, yeah. For so they did unto the false prophet. Take a bow, dude. Because <laughs> you got your reward. You got what you wanted, huh? You're accepted. You're accepted by a click. You're accepted as if you had never got out of high school. Crazy. One verse in Jude. One verse in Jude, 16. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts. And their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Yeah, yeah, you don, you don the plaid in order to ingratiate yourselves. And then you take on the mannerisms, the speech. You take on something that from another man and put it onto yourself. And then you say things in order to, to gain advantage. To get the rah rah rahs. Having men's persons, you say things that people want to hear. <laughs> You're Christians, all right. You're Christians, all right. Yes, you are. Why don't you grow up and realize that you're a saint? Start acting. Second Peter chapter three. Uh, Second Peter chapter two. Excuse me. Second Peter chapter two. This is one on a verse three. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift, swift destruction. Yes, of your own selves shall men arise. Seeking to draw away disciples after themselves. And that's been leveled at me, of course. And, you know, <laughs> the, the subscribers to this channel, great. I don't want to get bigger. I can't fathom what it would be like to have a thousand. That I, I'd go crazy. That's, having what, I mean, thank you, a lot of enemies and even uh, people, brethren, praise the Lord, whatever. Um, that that's that's enough, okay? All right, I, I did that. I'm content with leave that alone, okay? I don't want to get bigger, okay? God's a god of the little guy, and when you get these people who get this like ginormous and see, the longer you walk with the Lord, the harder it gets. And you have to be aware and beware of being taken with your own mystique. Not your own musk, your own mystique. Okay? And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness, they want the praise, they want the fame, they want the rah rah rahs. Okay? Some want just the money. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. <clears throat> Whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth. Romans 14. 
Romans 14. Just about done. Romans 14. Beware of making yourself of the number. You are accepted in the beloved. Fellowship with a fellow saint. Praise the Lord. But beware of making yourself of the number. Of comparing yourselves among yourselves. Beware of that. That's the point of this video. To warn you. To watch out. Especially in these days. At the deception of what Christianity is. Remember this. Because these people who you call your friends. Who rah 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 with you in the comment sections. Who you don't actually know personally. Okay. A lot of the brethren that I speak with. Outside of this over the phone or email. Skype. I know on a personal level. Okay. I can call them legitimately my friends. They're my brethren and sisters. But I can legitimately call them my friends. Okay? What about these people that you're rah rah rahing with in the comment sections? And, and uh, yeah, yeah, amen, brother. What about that? Huh? How many of them would be there for you if you needed them? Availability is one thing, okay, and many of you who know who have contacted me before, I'm kind of difficult to get a hold of. <laughs> That's not my fault. I, 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 I just, anyway, anyway. Hey, yes, it is my fault. I could do better. Yes, I could. Excuse me. Excuse me. You know, I, I try, I work hard at not getting wrapped up into the very thing that I'm talking to you about. Because I've been given a lot of good examples of how not to be the longer you walk. I'm going on 16 years. And I have been I have been given plenty of example of what I see of how not to get the longer you walk. But when you see in the scriptures in longevity, Paul, I finished the course. I fought a good fight. You know? But here's what I want you to remember. Romans 14, 11, and 12, generalized statements. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Your husband or your wife ain't going to hold your hand with you at the judgment seat, or in most of your cases, the great white throne. These, these buddies of yours that are only there because you are bound by hatred of another. Okay, wow, that, that's quite a bond. Lasting bond, huh? Yeah, okay. They're not going to be holding your hand, cheering you on at either the judgment seat or the great white throne. At the end of the day, it's just you and the Lord. What is the value of this being accepted by men over being accepted in the beloved? You figure that one out for yourself. John 21, and then we will be done. John 21, and then we will be done. Verses 20, under verse 22. Then Peter turning... <laughs> Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Don't follow a multitude to do evil. Jesus saith unto him, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Your little click buddies aren't going to be there with you 
to cheer you on at the judgment seat of Christ. They're not going to be with you to cheer you on at the great white throne of judgment. Okay? At the end of the day, whoever you are, it's between you and the Lord Jesus Christ. What's that relationship like with you? Hmm? What is it? What is it like? Or are you trying to um, replace something? And see, this is what you also got to watch out for with these people. They're trying to replace a relationship that isn't there, that ought to be there, with carnal relationships. Okay? The relationships, for example, that I have with, like, Brother Alexander, with Brother Jeff Jones, with the brother from out the Northeast, okay, from our beloved brother from Ohio, from the brother in Croatia, the sister in England, okay, uh, the brother the brother from Oregon, all right, I, sorry, I missed your call, brother, sorry about that, okay, uh, all right, from uh, the brother from Georgia, okay, the foundation there is first the Lord, and knowing that we are accepted in the beloved, hence that fellowship of saints is stronger there, because why the relationship is first there with the Lord. And see, when that's lacking in someone, they will go to any other means to try to fit into something when they ought to be already accepted in the beloved. Does that make sense? I hope it does. I hope it does. It's going to be it for this video. I do got another video, but I don't think I'm going to be doing it today. I mentioned to a brother who wanted to Skype with me. I was like, oh, of course, brother. I'd, I'd love to love to have fellowship with you, especially because I gave him some brain drippings, which came back with interesting things. Uh, but anyway, um, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you do, listen, um, the whole point of this is to remind you that you are on your own walk with the Lord. Not that you go contrary to what the scripture says, but like we just saw in John 21, never mind what he's doing. It's between you and the Lord. What brother so-and-so is doing, that's what the Lord has him doing for him. Okay? Not that he follows a different path to salvation or being right with the Lord. God forbid. No. But we all have, we have one Father. We have one standard. We all follow the same Lord. But the Lord has me going this way. Uh, brother from Croatia, another way. Brother Alexander, another way. Brother Jeff, another way. By the way, pray for Brother Jeff. He, he really needs our prayers. Please pray for him. I'll put that in there. The whole point is, you're going to give an account yourself to the Lord. And these people that you are rah 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 with on fleshly carnal matters are not going to be rah 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 you whether you're at the judgment seat or the great white throne. Everyone's going to be peeing down their leg in fear. keep that in mind. Thank you for watching if you do. See you in the next video. Bye.